Oh, oh, we got our answer. Right. Nice. <laughs> Good job. That's our, that's our goal for the entire period. We're going to draw this box. What are we doing to fix this? We're going to draw this. Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week back from your break. I hope you had a very relaxing, rejuvenating break. If you're following me on Instagram, you know that I was using these to have my students reflect on what their success will look like in 2023. But this video isn't really about like using the post-it notes for reflection in the case of like SEL. It's more about how I used post-it notes for my students to reflect on the phenomenon that we were engaging in throughout the unit. Now you know that I am an emerging NGSS teacher. I am trying so hard to really teach my students science by doing science and it is a challenge. It is really tough especially for brand new teachers because chances are you really weren't educated in this way. I know I wasn't so it has taken me a long time but I think what I have for you today is something really easy that you can implement. Now obviously Starting with a phenomenon is a great way to NGSSify any unit. Um, and that, that's typically what I would do when I was like, okay, we have to use these standards. All right, cool. I'm gonna just use a phenomenon. But I found that the phenomenon didn't mean as much if I wasn't carrying it throughout the unit. And so I would use what I call phenomenaling um, to basically introduce a phenomenon and, and provide scaffolding for creating models. And that was my goal. And, and basically the students had to look at the macroscopic and try to think what's going on on the particle level and describe it using this strategy of phenomenaling. Along with this modeling strategy, I wanted my students to be able to depict it you know, on a whiteboard. And one of the bad things about whiteboards is that once the students erase it, it's not there. I mean, the students could obviously, you know, take a picture of it and post it and whatnot, but it wasn't something tangible that they could actually use and carry throughout the unit. So then instead of using whiteboards this time around, I ended up using that really large post-it paper. So it's like poster post-it paper where it has like a sticky backing. And I had my students use both sides. And so on the one side, one of the, the skills that we were practicing was asking questions. And so I use um, something called the question formulation technique. And basically the students were asking questions about a phenomenon. Now in particular, the phenomenon that I used was conductivity. I used that to kick off my units on bonding. So we use this actually for two units. So we use it for ionic bonding unit, and then we revisit it for, again, for the covalent bonding unit. And so what I had the students do is I had them use this giant poster paper for the question formulation technique on one side, creating the particulate model on the other side. And then what I had the students do was over the course of a unit, use the post-it notes to correct anything that was inaccurate, to explain anything in more detail, and then finally to incorporate any questions that they have. And I had each post-it note be represented like a different type. So for example, the green was for the students to be able to explain something in more detail. And then the pink was to correct any inaccuracies and the blue, for example, would be to ask questions. And so I found that this was a very effective strategy in helping the students see the importance of the phenomenon, have them reflect on the phenomenon and basically shows students the way science works, right? The nature of science. As we learn more, we can add more information to our models. And so this was a tremendous improvement over the course of the, of the unit. I definitely found that the students saw a lot more value in the phenomenon, because I feel like if you just do the phenomenon in the beginning of the unit or chapter or whatever you're doing, it doesn't hold as much value. To be able to revisit can really help. So I introduced the unit with the conductivity phenomenon. Once we finished that unit, we revisited and incorporated that post-it note strategy. I took the models back again. We completed our unit on covalent bonding, and then we revisited back to our phenomenon and again incorporated more post-it note information. And the students were very, very engaged. I thought it went over much better and they were able to see, wow, like I actually, I did learn a whole lot as a result of engaging in these units. So I think that's it for me. Um, like I said, really short and sweet, very easy strategy. If you want your students to reflect on a phenomenon all throughout a, a unit, have them use some post-its, have them stick it right to their models. They'll be able to easily reflect, improve,
improve, revise, all that good stuff. And if you try this in your class, you know I'd always love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and I'll be sure to check in with you guys in a couple of weeks.